Hi, my name is Father Boniface. I'm the director of the Institute for Ministry Formation at St. Vincent Seminary. And one of our central programs is a formation program for spiritual direction, and I often get a lot of questions about spiritual direction. Here are a few regular questions that I receive about spiritual direction. What should one look for in a spiritual director? And related to the second question, is there a pattern to spiritual direction? The pattern to spiritual direction, of course, helps one understand what to look for. Uh, really at the, the heart of spiritual direction is, of course, it's in the context of our faith. Uh, I'm obviously a Catholic, and spiritual direction is, a, is a, I would say, a particularly Christian thing. It's uh, related to uh, Jesus' journey with the two on the road to Emmaus, for example. It's related to the kind of encounter that Jesus has with individuals and the ways that he open hearts, opens hearts. At its, at its core, spiritual direction is vulnerable. Uh, the directee is, is sharing the depths, sharing the interior life with the spiritual director. The spiritual director is someone who represents the church in a broad way, represents Jesus. And I need to be able to see that. I need to be able to trust the spiritual director in a way that I really learn to speak to the spiritual director like I speak to Jesus. And so it doesn't have to be a priest or a religious, although they tend to have an immediate, because of the consecration, we make some immediate connections. Now, some people have been hurt by priests and religious, and they don't. And so it's not always uh, optimal, even if it's possible. But um, we want to be able to make that connection. Now, there, there may be another uh, person that we, we really see the connection with Jesus, the connection with the church. And it's a person that I'm, I'm willing to grow with so that I can open up and be more vulnerable to share my interior life. My interior life is going to be, of course, my life of prayer, my personal life with Jesus. It's going to be other aspects of my interior as well, my, my thoughts and feelings, my interpretations, the way I see the world and the things that I've experienced, just various ways that I uh, share my vulnerability. And so I really need somebody that I can trust. And of course, that's also going to go hand in hand with somebody who can meet with me regularly enough and that I can a normal pattern is an hour once a month and having a spiritual director that I can meet with in a regular way is very helpful. I also like to emphasize that an even better word than spiritual direction is spiritual fatherhood or spiritual motherhood. There is a way that even through monthly meetings for an hour, but sometimes it spills over a little bit by text message or something in between, some connection. It's not like therapy in developing a kind of therapeutic space or distance that it would be awkward to see a spiritual director at the supermarket or in church, like it might be to see a therapist out of the normal therapeutic context. And so having somebody that I can really uh, commit to even for a long-term relationship, that's the ideal. Sometimes in circumstances we meet with a spiritual individual that we connect with Jesus or the church just a few times, and that can have a value, but the ideal is an ongoing process, a longer process that we're able to participate in. So the availability, the commitment, the trustworthiness, the connection with Jesus and the church, these are all critical qualities of a spiritual director. How would one determine if the spiritual director they have is a good fit for them? Well, related to all of these things, as we get to know someone, of course, we don't start out trusting someone completely. And so we grow in trust. We, we learn by stepping a little farther and farther into vulnerability, taking a risk to share a little bit more. We see the kind of attentiveness. I'm a very sensitive person, and if I feel that somebody isn't listening to me, that's very hard for me. And uh, I have a sensitive heart that way. And uh, I also, when I'm, when I'm sharing really hard things, I need a little bit more silence. It takes me a little effort to kind of say the thing that's hard to say. And if I have a spiritual director who's a little bit more anxious or, you know, uh, jumps in the silence too quickly. Now, sometimes I can say, you know, I just need a little bit more space to share it. I can work through some th certain things. But sometimes there just isn't a good, a good fit there. I'm never going to be able to get to the depths that I need to because of the kind of personality conflict or the, the different styles that are there. Yeah. 
as I said, the best thing is always to try to work through as much as possible. If I have enough trust that I can say, I'm not sure this is working the best. I wonder if we can work on this thing. This is what I've noticed is not going well. And uh, I've had a number of directees bring that up with me. Uh, in almost every case, it's been something that we could work through. And in the cases that it wasn't, that was fine too. They, they found another director who worked better. And so, but, but the first step is always, if there are difficulties, if we're not able to trust, not able to be vulnerable enough, we're anxious about the level of commitment, or there are some stylistic conflicts or things we don't understand, then we should talk about those things, clarify them. What should be the cost for spiritual direction? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, I've never charged anyone anything, and uh, that's part of the luxury of being a Benedictine monk. People give to the monastery. I also uh, have several jobs that bring in a certain income. The monastery provides for my basic needs. Sometimes people will provide donations towards my ministry, or towards the monastery, towards the seminary. Um, and that's fine, but I never charge anything. So I'm not the best to say uh, what that charge should be. Uh, I would say uh, the optimal thing is if uh, a person can be employed by a parish and uh, then individuals can give to the parish and so that there's an indirection. The problem with paying for spiritual direction is that I, I have a hard time getting away from the idea that you're with me because I pay you to be with me. Um, so it can get in the way in certain circumstances, and especially if you have the kind of people who don't want to let go of that control. They have a hard time receiving gratuitous love. And that's one of the real powerful blessings of spiritual direction is, is modeling the gratuitous love of the Heavenly Father. And so, so I'm really hesitant about paying for spiritual direction. Um, but I, I would say uh, you know, people do give their time, and obviously the wor worker is worth his wage, as St. Paul says, and so, um, you know, we want to respect that as well, but I would think donations are more reasonable, and then I suppose what the person is able to give makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, I don't know, $50 an hour or $25 an hour, or maybe $100 an hour. Anyway, I would say a kind of sliding scale makes, makes the most sense, but um, it's not something that I necessarily promote. And, uh, and then, is there an alternative to spiritual direction? Well, uh, yes and no, in the, in the sense that spiritual direction is not a necessary means of salvation or holiness. It's not necessary. Uh, it is a fruitful means. It's a powerful means. And, and in some way, I'd say there's, there's no substitute for it. Uh, to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with a person who represents Jesus and who I deeply trust and whom I, with whom my life unfolds. Um, I should also mention that, of course, the expertise, the experience, the wisdom, the knowledge, the learning of the spiritual director is going to be important. Uh, when looking for a spiritual director, all of those things are important. Uh, John of the Cross really emphasizes personal experience. Teresa of Avila really emphasizes knowledge of the faith. Uh, we, we want both of those, as well as the dynamics of trustworthiness. We want learning and, and personal experience. And, um, but anyway, the, uh, it doesn't have to be somebody who is holier than I am. Although, again, it should be someone in whom I can see Jesus and trust that Jesus is really working through this person, that this person represents the the, the maternal church, our mother the church, in some way, and, uh, and we can trust that connection to the church. Those, those things would be important. And that's why a recommendation from a pastor can be helpful, or there are uh, resources like seekdirection.app, A-P-P. You can just type that into a, a search bar in your web browser, seekdirection, one word, dot app, A-P-P. Uh, is uh, a, a service that provides trustworthy spiritual directors who are formed in, uh, uh, have graduated from different schools of spiritual direction like our own at the Institute for Ministry Formation and are, are now uh, certified uh, as spiritual directors. So, um, but uh, are there alternatives to spiritual direction? 
Um, as I said, in a strict sense, I, I would say not. Although, in a, in a broader sense, what do we what do we need fundamentally? We need somebody, uh, and even multiple people, with whom we can journey towards the Lord. That's the fundamental thing. We need people with whom we can journey towards the Lord. We need somebody with whom we can share everything. We really need to be able to get to the depths of what's happening in our hearts because the process of sharing it with a person will make it pro possible for us to share it with the Lord. Those, those pathways of trust go hand in hand. Although I might say I trust God completely, if we don't have a tangible experience of sharing it with another human being, we probably are not going to be able to share it with the Lord really either. Um, God is sovereign and he can do all things. He has a way of breaking into our lives. I'm not denying that, but ordinarily, the normal pathway is that we learn to share with the Lord by learning to share with, with someone else. And so, um, now sometimes uh, accompaniment, uh, maybe a spiritual friend. Um, I like to promote, you know, spiritual direction we can think of as being on a spectrum where like the highly trained expert spiritual director is over here. But then over here we have some spiritual companionship. Um, maybe you're in a men's group and you see another man in the men's group. He's been very committed for a number of years. You really trust him. He's not trained as a spiritual director. He's not promoting himself that way anyway. And, but you just say, hey, could we get together and could I share with you some things about my faith? Or maybe you're a, a youth minister and there's somebody else in youth ministry you really trust. Or maybe somebody else in your parish that you just see like, this is a person that really gets it, that I feel like I could trust and that I would like to just connect with and share more fully with. Our other small groups, uh, two, three, four, five people, discipleship quads, uh, or, or small sharing groups, faith sharing groups, um, shared Lectio Divina, or Bible study groups that are really about personal sharing more than just growing in knowledge of scripture. Um, these can all be settings that we can share very deeply and were received by another human being. So they could be uh, certain alternatives to spiritual direction when it's not, feels like it's not available or we haven't connected with somebody at this point. We need some community, some relationships in which we can really go as deep as possible with, uh, with one or more individuals. And then uh, how does one assess whether or not uh, one is ready to pursue spiritual direction? I would say anybody who has a spiritual life uh, it, it could benefit from spiritual direction. Now again, uh, this is going to be most beneficial for those who are kind of committed to the spiritual life, uh, what we might call intentional disciples, to use Sherry Waddell's language from the Siena Institute, or those in the purgative way, to use the more ancient description from uh, Dionysius the Areopagite or uh, St. John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila, Thomas Aquinas, they talk about uh, beginners or the purgative way. So those who have really committed themselves to the spiritual journey, but also people uh, who are uh, maybe exploring the faith, we can all benefit from one-on-one -on -one relationships in which we can share personally and deeply. So that accompaniment is benefits everyone. And that's why Pope Francis in the Joy of the Gospel indicated to us that everyone must be initiated into the art of accompaniment. Religious, clergy, and laity, everyone must be initiated into the art of accompaniment. In his apostolic exhortation on the youth, youth Christus Vivit, Pope Francis had a whole section on mentoring. Now, I wouldn't equate mentoring with spiritual direction. Spiritual direction can have a dimension of mentoring in some circumstances, although it's not necessary. But Pope Francis, in talking about mentors, there's a lot of overlap there with spiritual direction and spiritual fatherhood or spiritual motherhood. And he indicated the importance of mentors for young people. And the way that he described it, I would say that it really fits for anybody who wants to grow in faith. And so spiritual direction, I think, is a, a great resource, broadly speaking, and we can only benefit from more of it. And so I really warmly encourage it. Hope those answers were helpful for you. May the Lord bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.